Life Audio. Coming up on Encouragement for You, Dr. Billy Kim of Far East Broadcasting shares about his bout with cancer, and life coach Todd Nibbins discusses overcoming anger. Welcome to the Encouragement for You podcast, brought to you by Encouragement Communications in association with the Salem Web Network and is part of the Life Audio Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. In just a moment, your host, Don Hawkins, will introduce today's episode. First, a word from our sponsors. Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Hear the Bible come to life and learn the Word of the Lord. With over 7 million downloads, Bible in a Year with Jack Graham is the fastest growing Christian podcast. Do not be frightened. The angel reassured, I have come with good news. In the town of Bethlehem lies a baby. He is swaddled securely in a manger at the inn stables. This child is the Messiah, the Lord, the Savior of the world and redemption of mankind. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Cancer has become one of the greatest health challenges of our time, and Dr. Billy Kim, the founding pastor of one of the largest churches in Korea and the former president of Far East Broadcasting, discusses his bout with cancer with our host, Don Hawkins. Tell us a little bit about your personal experience with cancer, when you were diagnosed and and, uh, what you've been dealing with. Well, I was in Seoul, Korea. I went to Samsung uh, Medical Center and a uh, routine annual checkup. And uh, they said, well, there's something on your prostate. And so they did 10 biopsies. Hmm. And three of them show, I think, a little cancer cells in there. So I said, let me have the medical record. I want to go to the United States and get it, uh, you know, second opinion. And finally, and a second opinion said, uh, you need the surgery, then uh, after surgery you could have uh, radiation treatment, or you could have uh, radiation treatment, but you cannot have a surgery after radiation treatment. So I learned quite a bit about the uh, prostate cancer because people gave me the book, and uh, first time I realized what it was. Hmm. And uh, so I had the surgery in May 31st. Three months later, they want to do the uh, radiation treatment for seven weeks. So I'm almost now two more weeks left. So you'll be done with this by the end of October. I know October you'll be... October 30th, I'll be finished. And uh, you'll be delighted with that. And, and how did you make the decision to come to the States to get uh, your cancer treatment? What uh, prompted you to do well, that? Well, two years ago, my wife had, uh, you know, complaining about her back aching. So my daughter lives here in uh, Overland, California. Mom, you better go get an MRI and blood test. And they found third stage of the uh, multiple myeloma. I've never mm-hmm. heard that before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they, she went to back surgery. Then she went to uh, a bone marrow transplant at the City of Hope. And all that I've been to learn about the cancer. And from then on, every time I go back to church, when I see a cancer patient, you know, I take my time to pray for them, encourage them. Hmm. And uh, so she's been here two years, 
and it's uh, remission now, and she's gone back to Korea last Monday. Mm. I'm so thankful to hear that. I know multiple myeloma is a very serious form of cancer. Uh, several years ago, while I was at uh, Back to the Bible, uh, Dr. Wood Kroll told me about a young man from Pennsylvania that he had met, and he said he and his family had been doing battle with cancer. He had multiple myeloma. His name was Chris Bingaman and had the privilege of meeting Chris and his family. And that was my first exposure to multiple myeloma. That was the cancer that took the life of uh, Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart. And, uh, and so what happened was that Chris wound up after his research, uh, uh, doing what your wife did, she came to the States to City of Hope, one of the great uh, uh, med- medical facilities in this country. Oh, I would really appreciate yeah. all their staff. Yeah, they're great folks. Uh, Chris went down to Little Rock, Arkansas, where the Walton family had to use some of the resources God had blessed them with uh, to set up a specialty treatment for multiple myeloma. And uh, he went through a very difficult time, almost lost his his life wound up having the autologous bone marrow transplant that your wife Trudy had, and uh, he is now cancer free today and has been for well over 10 years. He's met some. So, you know, it, it, amazingly, there are many, many people who do extremely well. But you to, know, uh, Trudy got, when she came with me to New York City after Baptist World Alliance Congress in London, uh, Birmingham, England. And uh, she was complaining and she was speaking to the women's group, I was speaking to the church. And uh, so it's a very, she can hardly move uh, in, out of the bed in the morning. Hmm. And we thought it was very strange. And uh, she had uh, five cracks in her back of the vertebrae. Hmm. So they opened up, put some cement in there. Then they transferred to City of Hope, have her own, uh, you know, bone marrow taken out. And five days, five hours a day, and put it back in and start from zero base. Hmm. Many people, hundreds and thousands of people pray for her, yeah. and she had a very positive attitude about the, uh, what she had, and I was really surprised how strong she was. I think, you know, beside the not only prayer that people have offered, but she had the determination, and she's going to lick the disease, and she certainly did, and she's really walking real fast and enjoying life. Well, we're so thankful to hear that. Uh, Billy, you mentioned uh, really three factors here, prayer, the best medical care, and a positive, persistent attitude. Talk about those factors a little bit, if you will. Okay. Uh, my church, uh, I think in the morning, I don't know, you know about the Korean early morning prayer meeting. 4.30, they gather. Uh, I think yesterday they had about 2,000 people, and they earnestly pray for my wife. Now they pray for me. Then men like Billy Graham pray for Trudy and also Reverend Paul Cho, the, who has the largest church in the world, I guess. And he called from uh, Seoul here to U.S. and pray over the telephone for my wife. And she realized that so many people are praying and concerning. She has such a positive the idea about she's going to get healed. And uh, God certainly healed her, and she's really remarkably uh, well, and uh, she enjoys food, she enjoys children and the grandchildren, she enjoys working in the church. So I think, you know, that's uh, one part uh, that God has somehow made her, and then she's also ministering to a number of people who are suffering from cancer. Sandra is next. She's listening in Salina, Kansas. Hello. Hi, thanks for calling. Hi, Sandra. How are you? I'm great. It's really uplifting to hear your story, so thank you for sharing. Thanks. Um, I had a tumor that had to be removed at the Mayo Clinic. It was an ovarian tumor, Uh huh. and they didn't know at the time if it was cancer or not. And I had so much support. I mean, my church family here in Salina my grandmother's church in Oklahoma. I had family overseas, in, well, my husband's family in Germany. Just, I mean, just so many prayers. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. And I think, um, oh, by the way, it was not cancer. It was uh, a non-cancerous tumor. Non-malignant tumor. Well, thank the Lord. Oh, yeah, well, praise Sandra, God. <laughs> you're a very lucky person. You are able to go to Mayo Clinic. Yes. About three, four years ago, I asked my wife, let's go to Mayo Clinic and get a physical. You know what my wife said? She said, you're not King Fonsein or you're not Billy Graham. That's only big shots to go to that hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and 
So after she got the multiple myeloma, I said, see, if you went to myeloma four or five years ago, you probably got that early stage and you won't have to go through all that trouble. <laughs> so she felt only the big person, the rich person and wealthy person could go to Mayo Clinic. So Sandra, oh, you are a very lucky lady. I was there for two weeks and I never saw one famous person. <laughs> well, I see, was looking. Yeah. Well, God <laughs> blessed you in, in letting you go there. You know, thank God for the wisdom that he has given and, and for the opportunity and, and certainly... It was a twofold blessing. Number one, that when you're diagnosed with the ovarian tumor, they discovered it was not malignant. And then secondly, that you had the opportunity to get into Mayo Clinic and get, you know, some of the very best medical care. But thirdly, the support that you receive from your family, from your church family, from your friends, all of that is just fantastic, Sandra. It's awesome. Well, we are you know, my wife had an Indian doctor. His name was a Dr. Sharma. Uh-huh. Also, the city of Hope, she had another Indian doctor, and his name is Dr. Pollockett. They are a wonderful doctor. I have a new appreciation for medical profession. Now, mm-hmm. my uh, oncology, radiology doctor is a Korean, Dr. Lee. Mm. And when they refer me to him, and I walked in his office, he said, you interpret for Billy Graham in 1973 Korea yeah. Crusade where he, we had more than a million. He remembered that, yes. He was over here at junior high wow. and they saw, he saw them on the television. Hmm. He said, my life's hope and wish was I want to meet that man who <laughs> translated for Billy Graham. And when I walked in his office, I mean, he was so all by it. I walked in. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful, though, that, that you were a ministry to him and an encouragement to him when you translated for Billy Graham, and now he's able to minister to you and help you in dealing with cancer. Right. You know, he has, uh, he's, I said, what church you go? He said, I go settle back. Yeah. Church. Mm-hmm. That's I in California. I have a small group at my house, if you come preach for me. So I took Cliff and Trudy with me to his house. Yeah. They had about 15 people. We had a wonderful time. That's fantastic. It's a how Lord bring us together. Yeah, God works in so many wonderful ways as he has with Sandra. Billy, would you lead us in prayer on behalf of Sandra for her continued health and strength? Yeah, Sandra, I'm going to pray for you in Korean. Thank you. 전능하신 하나님 은혜 감사합니다. 산드라를 축복해 주시고 영육간의 건강 주시기를 간절히 원하옵고 바라옵나이다. Oh God bless her. Give her strength and health. May she be a great witness to the people round about her. We'll be back with more after a brief word from our sponsors. And don't forget to listen for Dawn's live weekend talk show, Encouragement Live, heard Saturdays at 7.05 p.m. Central Time on American Family Radio and other radio stations around the country, as well as on the worshipchannel.org. Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Hear the Bible come to life and learn the word of the Lord. With over 7 million downloads, Bible in a Year with Jack Graham is the fastest growing Christian podcast. Do not be frightened. The angel reassured, I have come with good news. In the town of Bethlehem lies a baby. He is swaddled securely in a manger at the inn stables. This child is the Messiah, the Lord, the Savior of the world and redemption of mankind. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts. If someone tells you, I never get angry, chances are they are either in denial or they're lying to you. Todd Nivens has served as a pastor and a life coach, and he joins host Don Hawkins to talk about getting a handle on angry feelings.
Let me read you a couple of verses to help us kind of understand that. Ephesians 4.26 says, Be angry, and yet do not sin, and do not let the sun go down on your anger. That, that says three things to us out of that passage. One is that anger isn't necessarily the problem. It's what you do with the anger that becomes the problem. Yeah. And so the Bible says not to sin, and don't let it uh, go without dealing with it because the longer it deals with it and the longer you stay angry the more it festers and the more it's going to the bigger mess it's going to make then it also says scripture also tells us um in colossians 3 8 but now also put them all aside anger wrath malice slander abusive speech from your mouth well wait a minute how do i put that aside i thought anger was just something that comes on me that i have no control over but apparently the bible tells us there, there's a difference. We, we are to put anger aside, meaning we have a choice to deal with anger. So there's two mm-hmm. things we can know. One is anger is an emotion. Yeah. And, and typically it's an emotion of self-preservation, whether uh, someone's attacked our personal worth or, or the needs, our essential needs, or our basic convictions. One of those three things, usually it falls into one of those three things. Yeah. And then we have a flood of emotion. You and I can't stop the flood of emotion, but we can stop, like Scripture says, and take that thought captive, that emotion, that painful circumstance captive, and then, by choice, respond to the emotion. That's why Scripture tells us to, you can put anger away. Yeah. You, you can be angry and not sin. And so... God says to us that um, not necessarily that anger is a, a bad emotion. It's what you let it become yeah. in your expression of it. I like the way you talked about dealing with it, Todd, the importance of dealing with it. There are a couple of word pictures that come to my mind. Uh, one is garbage. You know, yeah. garbage after it's piled up for a while. My wife and I were out of town for about a week and a half, <laughs> and uh, we came back, and, you know, the last thing we normally do is take out all the garbage. Well, we'd taken out all the garbage except for one small bag, and somehow that one small bag was overlooked. And believe me, we had to air out the house. It was probably rancid by the it time was, you came back. It uh, was rancid, put it mildly. It, it, and then anger is like that. If we don't deal with it basically by bedtime, by sunset, the other thing is an infection. You know, you get an infection if you deal with it quickly, if you get an antibiotic, you, 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 you lance that boil yeah. or whatever. Uh, but if you, if you let that sore fester and the, the pus develop and all, uh, you know, it's going to create major, major health problems. And, and, and anger will literally make you sick, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I, I liked your first illustration really well, too, in that because that one little bag of trash, maybe in the kitchen or wherever it was, wasn't just infecting the kitchen of your house. By the time you got home, the whole house was infected with it. Mm, yeah. It, it was, and that's what happens to us What ha- is when we don't deal with anger is that that small portion yeah. of our life Become, begins to control everything else going on in our life. And we, we mm-hmm. have a, a skewed perspective of the things happening to us because of the uh, the rottenness that's taken part of the anger that is being expressed in a wrong way mm-hmm. in one part of our life. It can wreck a, a, a husband-wife relationship to the point of no return unless mm-hmm. we learn what the problem is and begin to deal with that and let God began to take control of those areas in our life. Todd, you and I were both talking about how earlier in our lives, earlier in our marriages, uh, uh, we both were in a state of denial and like to pretend that we really weren't angry. And uh, a lot of people find themselves in that sometimes because of family conditioning and messages from early childhood and whatnot. Uh, But uh, the reality is there are forms of anger that don't necessarily involve explosions of rage, correct? Correct. Uh, Suppressing anger really comes out uh, to affect people in two different categories instead of just the person who is the explosive type angry person. The person who suppresses anger usually typically thinks something like this. It's not sociably acceptable to show other people that I'm angry. It's out of place. Uh, Two, if I show someone I'm angry at them, they they won't like me anymore. They they won't be friends with me anymore. Mm. Um, Another thing is... 
I, I will lose my reputation if I show anger, if I ever show that I'm upset about anything. So um, as a good friend of mine used to say, a lot of us in church can just be a, a mess and really upset about things, but we go we go to Robbie Ellis used to say, she's gone now, but it was Perry Ellis's wife, and they were in ministry and mm-hmm. missionaries to Brazil for a long time. But she used to say, us ch- church folks, we... Uh, we may be just wiped out and totally messed up and, and angry, and, and we suppress it, and we go to the fellowship hall and uh, eat ham and potato salad and act like nothing's wrong. Yeah, pretend that nothing ever happened. Some of you may be in that situation. We want to be of help to you. And Amber is listening in Jacksonville, Alabama. And Amber, we're glad to have you with us on the program. Mm, thank you so much. How can we um, help? I'm having a very, very big big problem dealing with the issues that you're talking about. And I know that as a Christian, I'm a human being. I get angry. There are instances where I have a right to get angry, but then that's it. It's how you deal with it. Yeah. And I have an especially difficult problem because I'm disabled, and I have homemates that come into my home. And unfortunately, as with, I guess, the entire population, there are a lot of them that they just they don't listen and they don't use their mind and they don't think and i guess the main reason for that is they don't really care yeah and i don't want to hurt people's feelings Mm -hmm. um we are supposed to you know give some benefit of the doubt but then that's it i found that i give it too much and then people start taking advantage of me well this is something my family used to say my wife and i began to say you're doing what we we used to do, and that is, I don't know if you're old enough to remember your mom going to the grocery store and getting green stamps. Are you old enough to remember that? Oh, yeah, I'm 51. <laughs> okay. okay. So you probably licked a few green stamps yourself and put them in a book? Yep. <laughs> yep. And we call that cashing in a book of stamps. What, what you've done is, as, as that person has done something, instead of responding to it at the moment, you just lick that stamp and you stick it in the book, and when the book finally gets full of those stamps, that's when you you respond, and and you cash all of them in at once instead of each one individually and in proportion to what they really are. So we call that at my house cashing in a book of stamps. There's a couple of things that I think you have to do. Uh, I believe that work. Um, there's a difference in being aggressive and assertive with your anger. Now, sometimes we think of an assertive person as someone being aggressive, but it's not, not necessarily. And, and for definition's sake, as we talk about this, let's, let's say they're not the same. An aggressive person is someone that, uh, because of their anger, um, takes care of their own self-worth, whatever is being attacked at that moment, without regard to the other person or what it's doing to them. If it costs the other person, it doesn't matter. That's an aggressive person in anger. But to be assertive means, I think Scripture tells us how to be assertive when it says to speak the truth in love. And so it sounds like to me a couple of things are going on with you. One, sometimes you don't speak the truth. You just let it go. And two, when you finally do get to it, the in love part may go, go by the wayside because you finally have to work yourself up to the point to even say anything. So to speak the truth in love means I'm going to speak the truth. And, and you say to the aide or to the person coming in, and and uh, uh, I, I know what you're talking about. Um, my, my father-in-law was a quadriplegic, and I helped care for him for a couple of years before he passed away. And we had people that would come in, and some would do an excellent job, and some of them, you, uh, you didn't ever want to come back again because they just didn't seem to care about the patient. And so uh, to be assertive means, and this is something that takes self-discipline that you have to work on, is you're going to have to identify what's upsetting you and and remove that from just an emotional response to what could make it different. And then you're going to have to say that thing to the person. Now, if they ignore you because they do work for a company, you can say to their supervisor the same thing without without being explosive, without being abusive, without taking away any dignity or self-worth from that other person, but yet speaking the truth and doing it in a kind, loving way that keeps uh, in focus the fact that you're talking to a person 
and and not a, an animal or a machine or something like that. So I think you're probably what you're going to have to do is take this. Well, they say, how do you need an elephant a bite at a time? You're going to have to take it a piece at a time and deal with each individual piece as it comes. Or your second option, if it's not big enough to really deal with or, or to do anything with, is then to just to, to allow yourself to drop it, and, and really we call it dropping anger, uh, and, and, and saying it's not something worth me getting upset over, it's really okay and allow people to be people and make mistakes because we all will because we're all fallen and sinful yeah uh, and that's the world we live in so things will never be perfect and sometimes we just drop those things because we let people be human but when they're doing something that that could injure you or, or something that's causing you discomfort uh, you really need to do something about it at the moment yeah. it happens and, and not like the stamp and stick it in the book and wait till you've had all you can take. Thank you for listening to this episode of Encouragement for You with Don Hawkins, host of Encouragement Live Radio and author of over 25 books, including Never Give Up and Master Discipleship Today. You can find more about Don and his books at encouragementlive.org. Encouragement for You is a production of Encouragement Communications with the Salem Web Network and lifeaudio.com. Editing by Phil Gebers. Production by Elizabeth Andrade. If you enjoyed what you heard today, we'd love for you to head over to your favorite podcast app and leave us a review. It really does help people find us. Let me take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on Encouragement for You. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Stay encouraged and join us next time for Encouragement for You. Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Hear the Bible come to life and learn the word of the Lord. With over 7 million downloads, Bible in a Year with Jack Graham is the fastest growing Christian podcast. Do not be frightened, the angel reassured. I have come with good news. In the town of Bethlehem lies a baby, he is swaddled securely in a manger at the inn stables. This child is the Messiah, the Lord, the Savior of the world and redemption of mankind. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts.